Today we're installing the Titanium Series Fast Pump on a 2002 Dodge. Okay, and this video is kind of going to be a two-part video because not only are we going to install the Fast Pump today, but we're also going to be insta installing a draw straw. So let's get started with our part numbers. Uh, this is the, again, this is f the Fast Titanium Series. Part number is TD08150G. And this works for the 1998 and a half to 2004 Dodges. And again, this pump kit is going to come uh, and it, it's actually designed to fit on trucks that have the pump on the block or behind the fuel filter for the common rail guys. If you have the pump in the tank, if your truck has been retrofitted, which we'll show you what to look for on that, if it's been retrofitted to the pump in the tank, you are also going to need to purchase part number STK1002. Um, a little bit about this titanium pump. The reason why we're featuring uh, this pump install today uh, is because this kit actually features FAST's new mounting system. Uh, their cab quarter or bed quarter mounting system, which is really, really nice. No more drilling the frame rail. Uh, it's going to cut your install time down greatly. Um, so we're, we're really excited to show you guys that. So let's do a little bit of an unboxing here on both the products. Again, the STK uh, 1002. You'll come, it'll come with the, the draw straw itself, uh, and what's kind of considered a bulkhead fitting here, and you'll get fittings for both half inch fuel lines and 3 8 inch fuel lines inside here, and also your draw straw. Uh, what's nice about FAST's uh, new draw straw kit in the STK 1002, um, both your supply side, of course, your supply side will be in the bulkhead fitting and also the return side will go here. So there won't be any need to cut the filler neck with this kit. So when you get to that, that part of the kit in your, in your titanium uh, kit, you'll go ahead and just discard that because both your return and your supply side will be here in the draw straw, which is really neat. Okay, so that's our STK 1002 kit. Now, our titanium series kit, a little unboxing here on this. Uh, first off, what you're going to want to do with this is what you'll be, I'm sorry, what you're receiving is you're going to be receiving your wiring harness and your half inch fuel hose. Your hardware kit. And in the, in the upper box here, you're going to be receiving your owner's manual and also your uh, Warner, owner's manual slash warranty paperwork and you'll notice on top of the warranty paperwork it has a space for you to write in your motor number and also your serial number right here of your pump. What's nice about FAST's uh, new warranty system is they ha actually have an online uh, warranty registration system so you don't need to fill this out and mail it in. Now what you'll do is you'll just record your serial number off of your pump and you'll go to FAST's website directly, fastride.com. Uh, they've actually got a quick link for warranty registration. You'll go in and you'll fill out your complete warranty registration there with a copy of your receipt and that will get you eligible for the limited lifetime warranty. Now you also inside the kit will have the pump system itself. The serial number is located right here. If you need the motor serial number, it'll be on the back of the T-block right here. And also in the block are our new mounting brackets. This is our, our, our cab corner or bed corner bracket, and then this is actually the new bracket that the, the pump itself is going to mount to. So let's get started with our install video. First thing that we're going to do is in our install video today is we're going to show you how to identify uh, whether you have the pump in the tank or not if your truck has been retrofitted. We're going to revisit that. We're going to show you again how to check for that uh, and then we'll get started with our installation. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to show you how to identify whether you have the pump inside the tank. So what you're looking for is in the place of your where your stock on the 9802 trucks, in the place of where your stock uh, lift pump would be which is going to be here in the engine com compartment behind your fuel filter and it's going to be quite lo a lot lower than the fuel filter. Now this isn't going to be the best shot in the world but we're going to do our best to identify it for you so I'm going to get my flashlight on it here for for the camera guy so he can see it okay alright and now, exactly where my flashlight is pointing, where the blue light is in this shot, and we're going to zoom in just a little bit here, okay, and let us focus right there. 
this silver block where the flashlight is right here, this is the uh, the fuel block that is part of the Dodge retrofit package when they put the pump inside the tank. So again, I'm going to shake my light right there. This is where your stock lift pump would normally be located. If you look there and you see this inch tall uh, aluminum block uh, that's got fuel lines going in and out of it, but no electrical connector on the bottom of it, then you know that your truck has been fit retrofitted for the pump in the tank. So if it has been retrofitted for pumping the tank and you just ordered the uh, fast platinum pump without the draw straw, you'll need to call us back and we'll have to get you a draw straw, uh, which is on our website, which is STK1002. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and get started with our install. Kind of take the light off of it there. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go ahead and get started with our install and we're gonna start off with, with dropping the tank and putting the draw straw in. Okay. Now we're going to disconnect the lines on top of the tank uh, before we drop our tank down. So we just, we're not going to be able to show you actually disconnecting them uh, because there's just no light in the shot. Uh, but these two lines right here, the two lines going in the top of the sending unit, the larger one is the suction line, the smaller one is the return line. To disconnect them, they have a, they have a plastic tab uh, at the end of the line. What you'll do is you'll just compress the tab uh, I use a little pair of needle nose pliers, compress both sides of the tab, and then you can pull the line directly towards you and take it off. Then the electrical connector for the sending unit is right here where my hand is. There's a red locking tab on it. Slide the locking tab out, and then you can push and remove the sending unit. So again, it's we can't do a shot on it from the, from the angle that we've got uh, because it just cuts out all the light. Uh, but we just at least wanted to show you the lines and then when it come, when we bring the tank down, we'll show you what, you, uh, what you'll need to do to take the sending unit out. Okay, we're going to go ahead and take our tank straps down. Uh, these are 15 metrics. Let's use an extension rod. Then you'll just go ahead and pull your straps down. And they simply unhook from the frame. They've just got a little two tab hook there. drop our tank out because it'll come past that strap there. I want to lower the tank down just a little bit and give you a little bit better look at the lines. All right, so here's our tank down. What we're going to do is we're going to lift the truck back up. Uh, we're going to get the tank out here and get it on the ground to where we can remove the sending unit uh, and to be able to uh, drill our hole for our draw straw. Okay, now we're about to install our draw straw, and we're going to take you through all the steps of installing the draw straw to try to help you uh, to make sure that you get your draw straw in and in correctly. Um, this is an O2 club cab short bed, so um, or extended cab short bed. So what we found with this one, with the tank that's in this truck and the way the cab's configured, is we really don't have a good place to mount um, our return and supply fitting. Um, it, by putting it right here. Um, we just really don't have the, the clearance that we need uh, and plus it's going to be on an angle there uh, for our o-ring so that kind of leaves right here out um, back here on inside the the molding of the tank it, it, it's it's not flat so it, that was that's not a good place so we've set the tank tank back underneath the truck and mocked it up and right here 
is going to be the best place for us because we're going to actually have an indention in the cab uh, that's going to give us a little bit of relief there. That's also going to put us about halfway of the tank. So that's good. That's going to help us alleviate a lot of our, our half tank issues. Um, but this is going to be our best spot and that's going to get our flattest seal. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to remove our sanding unit. Now to remove the sanding unit, um, what we usually do to get it started is I'll just use a screwdriver and just uh, a soft face hammer and I'll, I'll give it just a couple taps. Make sure you stay low on these plastic tabs so you don't break one of the tabs off. But a couple taps on that, that'll usually break it free. Okay, and I just use a strap wrench to go ahead and loosen it up. Okay, now what we're going to do is pull our sending unit out. So to get the sending unit out, what you do is you just actually pull right straight up, spring loaded and it'll come right out. Now this, the basket will be full of fuel. Just try to move it around as best you can to get your little bit of the residual fuel out. We're not going to have to do anything to the sending unit. So uh, when you get to the float, which is your fuel level float, you want to make sure that you angle the basket and let it come straight out without hurting the float. Okay, and then set this out of your way for, for the time being. Make sure you get your gasket out. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to drill our hole and what we're going to do is we're going to put a cup underneath of it to catch the shavings as we're drilling. So I know that I'm going to oh, I'm going to be right here is where I'm going to drill so I'm just going to bring my cup right there just hold it right straight underneath of the hole where we're going to be. I've already punched out the center. And this is an inch and a half hole saw that we're using. by putting the cup underneath of it. That gets all the debris and all the shavings from your hole out as you come. So none of them go down in the tank. Before we go any farther, I'm gonna brush everything away from the hole so I know that it don't have any debris go in the tank. All right. So now we've got our hole drilled. Check your tank, make sure we didn't have any plastic debris go down in there, it looks good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble our, our supply and return fitting, remove the nut off of the bottom of it and the lock washer and the O-ring. And what we're actually gonna do is put the, do is put the nylon tube on. little pressure and that'll push right on there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to measure for the tube and I know that I've got my hole's going to be okay here because my o-ring's going to go around it just fine. That's going to catch and that's going to seal good. So that looks good. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to measure to the bottom of the tank through my hole and it is exactly 12 inches to the top of my lip, okay? So at exactly 12 inches to the bottom of the tank, 
I'm going to add an eighth of an inch to that, or I'm going to subtract an eighth of an inch on that. So that uh, that's going to put me just over be 11 and 7 eighths is what I'm going to cut my, my straw at. So an eighth of an inch, I'm taking another eighth of an inch off the top of the bottom of the tank, uh, and that's going to be my relief between the bottom of the tank and your draw straw. So that's actually going to be where we're going to be able to get our fuel from. So about an eighth of an inch, that'll keep it pretty close to the bottom of the tank, and that's going to relieve us from having some corridor tank issues. So what we're going to do now is um, we're going to cut this from what will be our sealing surface of the of the uh, of the of the draw straw. We're going to measure down from there to eleven and seven eighths. Okay, Dylan, will you hold that for me? Eleven seven eighths. We're going to take an exact knife. Just gonna make a cut, small cut in the tube, just so we know where we're at. Okay. All right, got it. Now what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tube off with the exact knife at 11 and 7 eighths. What I'm gonna do is shorten my exacto knife up so I don't cut my hand off, which is something I'm pretty prone to doing too. Okay. Now at 11 and 7 eighths, we'll put that right down in the tank and measure it. And that's going to have us just about perfect. Okay, so we're about an eighth of an inch off the bottom of the tank. We're going to go ahead and tighten everything down and put our sending unit back in. So we got our um, bulkhead fitting in here. Uh, we cut it about an eighth of an inch off the bottom of the tank, so we're good to go on that. Uh, when you install it, you just make sure you put the nut and lock washer on the bottom of it, and that tightens it up against the bottom of the tank. So we've already installed it, we're good. We've put our sending unit back in. We're actually just about ready to go back up with the tank now. Uh, what we're gonna do, uh, and this is just something we do, is we're gonna install the hoses uh, before we put the tank back up in the truck. We use the half inch ends that come off of the, that come in the STK kit. And what we're gonna do is, these are push to lock fittings. They don't require a, um, they do not require a, uh, a hose clamp. So what we'll do, we'll just get them started on the hose. I was to actually put them against the ground and push the hose on down until it goes all the way up. Grab my other one and try to get away from us here. Get it started in the hose. Okay. And then just push it against the ground and push it all the way up. Um, on these fittings, we're going to use a little bit of pipe dope or thread tape. Okay, now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put both ends into the supply and the return side on the on the bulkhead fitting. And you notice that my hose is in a continuous loop. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the tank up, and once we get the tank up, we'll cut the hose at the supply side and the return side. And you'll see that once we get the tank back in the truck. So these are on a swivel head. They will turn for you. Seven eighths wrench. Okay. 
All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect my other side, tighten it down. Okay, so what we're going to do, tighten both of these lines up, and then we're going to get our, our tank back on our, our lift and start our tank back in the truck. We're going back up with our tank now, and what we've done is uh, we've, we've got our hose, our, our hose that's all one piece again, remember. Uh, we've just kind of moved it out uh, between the frame and the bed there, right about where our, our stock hoses are going to hook up. Everything's going to hook up stock here. Your, your, your stock lines are all going to hook up, your return and your pressure side. Uh, obviously, your pump's not going to be usable anymore, but we're going to uh, we're going to electronically we're going to disable that. But we're just going back up with the tank now. Uh, I'm going to take it up so far until I can get to the electrical connectors, and I'll get my electrical connectors. And while I've got it about halfway down here, uh, I'll also put my uh, my stock lines on. Okay, now we've got our tank up, and what we're going to do is we're actually going to take we're going to assemble our fast pump. We're going to bring it out here on the bench where we've got some light and being able to see. Uh, so our uh, return side here has already got the fitting in it. So all we're going to do is we're going to get in our bag of our hardware bag here, and we're going to catch one of our uh, half inch push to lock females. We're going to give us give ourselves just a little bit of pipe dope here. Actually got some left. Okay. Right. Make sure we don't have any going through. The these are seven eighths fittings, and you don't have to get these real tight. Just snug them up real good. Okay. And now our supply side to the engine. We've got to get the protective cover out of here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove it. For this one, what we want to use is inside of our kit, we're gonna have a straight male-to-male -male JIC connector. Again, just a little bit of pipe dope here or thread tape, whatever you've got. careful working around your wires going to your motor. Now our back side, which is our suction side or our tank side. Now on this one, we're going to use the 90 degree elbow here out of our hardware kit. A little bit of pipe dope. Sorry, one inch on this one. And we're going to tighten it until it is vertical and tight all at the same time. Okay. Now we're going to put a JIC fitting on it 
a female JSA, a little bit of pipe doper. For this fitting. Okay, so there's all of our plumbing for our pump assembled. Again, back side here, this is your tank or your suction side. Uh, on your silver block here, this is your engine or your delivery side, and this is our return to the tank side. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the pump over, and we are going to assemble our mounting bracket. Now, you'll get another bag of hardware that will actually come with your spacers and bolts in it. There are some 7 16 headed bolts in here and some aluminum spacers that we're gonna use. All right, now to assemble our bracket, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our three aluminum spacer blocks out that come inside our hardware package, okay? And be three 7 16 bolts. That we're going to use. Okay. Now we're going to assemble our our bracket here. What we're going to need to do is you can just mock it up and kind of see where your spacers are going to go. Have one here, one here, and one here. Okay, so now all we have to do is just snug up our bracket. All right, and as you can see, that's gonna have our pump built, plumbed, ready to go, and then our bracket that's gonna attach to the truck. Now we're going to go over the truck and we're going to show you our new mounting bracket uh, and how it's going to attach to the vehicle. Okay, this is the fastest new mounting bracket uh, that we've been anxiously awaiting. Uh, this is actually going to go in and tie in right here at this bed corner. Uh, this is a 15 metric bolt. One bolt, we're just going to drop it out and we're going to put our, our mounting bracket on. Now to reinstall, you've got a rubber isolating uh, sheet that they send with you. You want to put it between the new mount, between your new mount and the bed frame or the or the hanger frame there. All right, reuse your stock hardware back. And what we're going to do is start a couple of threads and drop the bolt, of course. Okay. All right. Again, yeah, we've got our, our rubber isolating sheet there and I'm gonna push it all the way back because our our mount is out quite a bit so now we're gonna tighten this up and as you can see from this bracket that doing that 
it's very, very sturdy. So we can kind of take our pump now and mock it up and look, and everything's gonna clear great. All right, so now we go back into our bag. It'll kind of help if you've got two hands here or an extra set of hands to help you. You get another isolating block that comes with this. All right, what we're going to do is I'm going to get Dylan to help me from the outside here, and he's going to help me kind of hold this up. All right, right there, and I've got my rubber piece between the, between the pump frame and itself. All right, we're just going to start a nut right there. Okay, and the next one. That's good. All right, two more bolts. Okay. And these nuts and fasteners, these are all 9 16ths. Uh, you'll need a 9 16 to tighten everything down. The good thing about these uh, nuts is uh, they are kind of uh, geared to where they'll tighten up. So that's got us at our lowest point now. So you can see that we've got tons of forward and back movement and also up and down movement. So before we go to, to tightening everything up, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna finish up our plumbing uh, we're going to cut our plumbing and go ahead and attach it and we're going to do that right now and then we'll come back and we'll show you how we mock up the pump uh, after we have our lines attached. What we're going to do uh, and while we're cutting away is here is again we've got our line and we left our line as one continuous loop. Okay, Our supply line is the, is the line, is the side or on ours. Now our supply side, our S on our, uh, on our bulkhead fitting is going to be this line right here. So our supply goes to the T or tank on the fast pump. That'll be right here. So we'll mock it up, get a pump where we want it, we'll cut our line, and we'll go ahead and attach our line. All right, next is gonna be the return line. Our return line is right here on the front. So what we'll do is we'll cut, when we cut our supply line, we'll have a pretty good size length of return line that'll be left. We'll come around, we'll mock up our return, we'll plumb it onto the pump, and that'll leave us with a length of hose that's gonna be going to our engine side, okay? Um, and with that, uh, we'll go ahead and start mocking up our pump. Okay, we've got our fast system mounted. Now, as you can see, we cut our hose. Uh, this is our return side, okay? And then our supply side is on the back again. Now, what we did, and when we were, when we were assembling our pump, uh, I didn't put our male push lock on here. I went ahead and assembled this on the, uh, on the air separator side. So this is going to be going to our engine. So this is the length of hose that we were left with. Uh, probably 12 to 14 feet. So we got plenty of hose to go to the engine compartment to get us to, um, to, get us to our injection pump. So I'm going to lay this hose out here. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and kind of route it where I know that I'm going to want it. All right. All right, take it forward, Dylan. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and push this hose on to the pump on our push to lock fitting. Uh, yep. Lost a little dodge there. So that's got our pump mounted. Now you can see, uh, and, and I, even with the video, that probably took us maybe 30 minutes at best to get this mounted. Uh, we've got our pump completely mounted now. It's done. All we've got to do now is we've got to run our line up to our injection pump and move, uh, send our electricals, 
uh, our, all of our electrical connections down. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put our drive shaft back in, we're going to get the truck on the ground, clean up our tools just a little bit, and we're going to go ahead and finish our install. Okay, we've got two pieces left in our hardware package, and that is the fitting that goes into our, our injection pump, and this uh, 90 degree angle fitting that our air dog line that's left is, is gonna hook you up, hook into. All right, our air dog line, after we've ran it and zip tied everything up, we've got just enough line to get us right straight to the injection pump. So we don't have to, we don't have to cut anything or anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead while I'm right here, and I'm gonna put my fitting in. Okay, all right, and I'm just gonna leave that right there. Now, I'm gonna have to remove my fitting from my VP44. There's the fitting right there, and you can see that it's damp where I've loosened it. Um, it is the fitting, there's two fittings on the side of the VP44, we've showed you this before, it is the one closest to the firewall. Uh, this one here is gonna be an 11 16 and what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove it, and we are gonna install our fast fitting. Now you're going to lose your fuel out of the pump. There's nothing we can do to avoid this because we're going to reprime. So make sure that your, uh, your sealing washers come off of the pump and that you don't double up on your washers. You should just feel the machine surface there. And you can simply just move that line out of your way. You can remove it however you want to do it. The fast fitting comes with the O-ring and the washer already on it. That's going to go directly into our pump. Fitting that fast sends you is a 21 metric. And be very, very careful with this. Do not over tighten this fitting. This is an O ring fitting, it will seal. So just do not over tighten it. Do not snap it off in the pump. If you snap it off in the pump, you got problems. I'm going to tighten this down. Okay. I'm just gonna snug it down like that. Okay, now I'm leaving my line off because I'm gonna prime my fast system into a bucket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my tools and stuff together here and I'm gonna bring my wiring harness up. Now we're going on to our electrical portion of our, of our wiring. We're almost done with our install now. Now all we gotta do is get power to the pump so we can prime the fast pump and then we're gonna prime the truck and I'm going to show you the proper bleeding procedure. So first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to unfold my wiring harness and I'm going to show you what each end is. The short end with the Deutsch connector here, this is actually going to go to um, where this truck is retrofitted with the pump in the tank. What they did when they do the retrofit is they put a fuel block on and put your stock fuel lines into it when they remove your pump. Then they take your ECM, the jump off of your ECM that used to power your stock lift pump and they hook a wiring harness into it and then they take that wiring harness uh, back to the new sanding unit. All we're gonna do is we're gonna unhook that wiring harness, we're gonna go right back to our stock ECM jump and we're gonna hook this wire on. It doesn't matter that the pump's in the tank, we're still gonna use our ECM, our stock ECM harness. So that's what our short, short one is for. Our long connector, obviously, is gonna go back to our fast. And then we have a bare wire uh, set. This is our constant power set. This will actually go right straight to the battery. So uh, fast even sends you your, your O-rings connectors. So we're going to install those now. Green will be ground. Red will be power.
Okay. So we've got our constant power drop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda hang this by my relay and I'm gonna start my relay back here. And I'm gonna go ahead and my short drop, I'm gonna actually go ahead and take it over the, the brake uh, master cylinder here. And that's about where I'm gonna have my relay. I'm gonna bring my constant power up and I'm just gonna kinda orient it in this area here. And then I'm gonna take my long drop that goes to my fast. And again, I'm gonna drop it right straight down behind my master cylinder and get it started down. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put the truck up in the air and, and show you these connections. Uh, then we'll bring you up and we'll end up at our battery connection and then we're gonna show you how to prime the fast Okay, system. now we're underneath the truck and this is our connection and it is right above the starter. Coming off the ECM, this is our connection that we're gonna unhook that we're gonna catch our power for our fast from. So that is our ECM connection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach over the camera here. I'm just gonna unhook this. I'm gonna unhook the drop that goes back to the in-tank pump, okay? I'm gonna bring our, our connection over for our fast, our short connection. I'm gonna hush, hook that up and push it till it clicks, okay? Now, we've got our long connection, our long drop, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount it, I'm gonna route it exactly the way that I routed my fuel hose going to the engine. I'm just gonna follow right along that and I'll actually zip tie this connection to that hose as I go back through here. So I'm gonna pull my slack out here. Try to keep it off the our shooting light that is actually as hot as the surface of the sun. If you guys didn't know, um, you can go to Lowe's and you can actually purchase a light that is exactly the same temperature as the surface of the sun. I don't suggest doing it, but unless you're gonna be doing some videos. So we're just gonna follow our routing down through here. right there that just fell off that was some dodge it fell off there now we're just going to hook our connection up to right to our fast push it till it clicks now i'll bring my slack and my harness back and i'll actually zip tie it up in the cab or underneath in the engine compartment All right, now, before we begin to prime the system, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both of these filters and I'm gonna take them off. Grab me a jug 40 over there, please. Sir. Take both of my filters off. Right there, at your feet, yeah. What we're gonna do is put a little fresh mobile oil on our fast filters, on the O-rings, just like you would on a, a normal oil filter or anything else. Dylan's even gonna come in here and get a bite of it. And we're gonna put those back hand tight on the fast. Okay. All right, we've got everything tight. All of our wires are run. We'll come back and we'll zip tie all this and clean it up. Now we're gonna let the truck back down uh, and we're gonna get our constant power source. We're gonna clean up our wiring just a little bit 
and then we're going to be ready to prime the system. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to catch a constant power source here at the battery. Okay, what we're going to do is these are half inch bolts on Dodge batteries and usually they're pretty corroded, so try to clean them up. I've gone through these and already hit them with a wire brush a little bit. So we're going to loosen these up. This is our negative side, so we'll catch our ground here. positive sign. Okay, now we've got our constant power uh, and we'll worry about cleaning all this up later. We're just trying to get this truck running tonight. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin our bleeding procedure. The first thing that we wanna do is we're gonna wanna prime our fast pump. So we've taken an empty oil jug here and we're actually gonna, we've left the fast line off the pump. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna route this line directly into this oil jug to where it can catch this fuel and you need something to catch fuel because once it picks up prime, it's going gonna, it's gonna to throw a bunch of fuel. And how do you keep, get power to the pump to get it to run? Well, that's what we're going to show you. On the Dodge, on the 24 valves, when you turn the key on, turn the key on, David, please, sir. When you no, turn the key on, you'll notice that everything just energizes. Uh, that's just the energizing cycle. Now what David's going to have to do is he's going to actually going to have to bump the starter and that's going to make the lift pump run about a uh, 15 to 20 second cycle, okay? So first off, go ahead David, bump it. And you can hear the change, how the, the pump changed in tone. That means it's probably picked up fuel to the to the water separator side. Yep, hear that? We got fuel. So it's gonna run about a 20 second cycle there. It shut off, so we've got fuel, which is awesome. All right, now I'm gonna leave that line right there. I'm gonna hook it up to directly to my VP. I've got prime, so I'm gonna hook it directly up to my fitting that I've placed on my VP44. And this is another 7 8 fitting. That fitting's not one of the Got our, we got our fitting on our fast pump. And if y'all are like me, you don't have a 7 8 stubby, so it's kind of going to be tight. What's for you here?
All right, simply snug that down. Now, we've got our fast primed. Now, what we've got to do is we've got to bleed our truck. So, we're going to go through the bleeding procedure with you. Okay, now we're going to go through the proper, proper bleeding procedure for your 98 to 02 trucks. Now, this is not going to be the bleeding procedure for your 0304 trucks. If you've got an 0304 truck, once you have your fast system primed, and you'll do it just the way we did it here. Uh, once you have your fast system primed, you put your pump fitting directly onto your CP3. If it is a, if it is a fast with filters, put it directly on the CP3 and crank the truck until the truck starts. With 24 valve, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to bleed the truck out. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up the number one and three injector lines. Um, I'm not on a 24 valve, on a VP truck, I'm sorry. Open up the number one and three injector lines, and that should get us because the truck was obviously running when it came in. So we're just loosening those up two or three turns. Okay, and we're gonna try to get it here without having to open up the number four line. So, um, okay, David, go ahead and crank it. All right, that's just burning out the fuel in that was already in the injectors. Okay, David, uh, turn the key on and bump it. What I had David do there is bump it. That way I've got uh, I've got fuel pressure into my VP. Uh, and what we're going to do now is we're just going to crank the air through it. Okay, go ahead, David, crank it. <laughs> so we begin getting fuel with the one one line, and he's going to call it, let the truck uh, uh, the starter cool off. Okay, crank it again. <laughs> Beginning to get air here. Okay. All right, crank it again. Crank it again. Again. All right, the truck starts running. It's okay, don't worry. Just tighten your lines down. And you'll notice the tighter, when you tighten your lines down, the motor will smooth right out. Over tighten the line. Okay? You got everything smoothed out? Go ahead and shut her off, Dave. All right. And that is our fast TD08150G install. All we're going to do now is we're going to go through, zip tie up our wiring harness, we're going to zip tie up our lines, get everything out of the way of the drive shaft, we'll go back over all of our fasteners and double check everything and make sure that we've got it. Um, for fast, uh, we've again uh, not to say this too much. We, we we've been really excited about this coming out. Um, the mounting bracket is it makes a humongous difference in the in the mounting of these systems, uh, and still got the the quality and the lifetime warranty uh, that you've always had with fast. And just now, it's a lot easier to to do an install, even though this install video kind of looks a little bit labor intensive. So. Um, TD08150G for your 98 and a half to 04 trucks. If you have any questions on this installation or any other installations, just give us a call. Thank you.